What's up, guys? It's RJ with Road Celebrity. I want to talk about private prisons versus state-run public prisons. Um, so the reason I'm doing this video is because apparently um, the Department of Justice has decided um, to stop using private prisons. So I have a link below to the uh, Twitter feed. It's a, what's called a Moments feed. It's like um, a bunch of tweets and news articles compiled on Twitter to cover a given topic. But um, so just to clarify, it doesn't. This doesn't mean that all private prisons are being taken over by the state or that they're being shut down or anything like that. It's just, um, to my understanding, that the private prisons that hold federal prison prisoners are uh, no longer going to be receiving those prisoners. So uh, I guess the state wants control over uh, those who have been um, punished by the Department of Justice, so for federal crimes. Um, so you're going to see in the Twitter Moments feed that I linked that um, there's a couple of screenshots of private prison companies companies that specialize in offering uh, quote-unquote private prison services. You're going to see their stocks are more or less plummeting right now. Uh, the time of recording this video is the end of August 2016. This is when um, this, de this decision has been ruled by the Department of Justice. So I'm going to get into why this may or may not be good or bad um, from a position of what is generally probably positive or negative for society. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about state funding versus private funded institutions in general. And then I'm going to wrap it up with a bit of an analogy between um, the prisons and another very big industry that is generally um, a hybrid of public and private. So I'm trying to break this down, this idea of whether or not um, something will be more accountable if it's done by the free market or if it's done by the state. So right off the bat, generally speaking, um, the left, meaning kind of the Democrats, the liberals out there, have sort of taken to this issue of private prisons being shut down as a good thing. So... And it may or may not be, right? Let's try to discuss this, and I'm interested in hearing what others have to say. The, um, the catchphrase that I'm getting um, exposed to a lot in this area from my uh, brief stint of research is, well, nobody should profit off of something as important as prisons, or private prisons should have never been a thing. Basically, the notion being that we don't want some company getting rich off of people being in jail. Um, couple things. First of all, a prison isn't really private, in my opinion, in my view, and, and I think this is fair to say. Um, it's not really private if it's getting all of its funding from the state. So you could say the same thing about a company like SpaceX, which is Elon Musk's company that is, you know, getting con big contracts from the federal government to, you know, send... Um, payloads and I think astronauts to the International Space Station and stuff like that. The same thing can be said with the military, which I'm teasing that now. That's that's something I want to talk about towards the end of this little presentation here. The notion that no one should be profiting off of prisons really is presupposing that there's a market for prisons. Right now, there's really a market, but it's it's a very distorted market. Um, who is the customer? Um, that's sort of where we have to to get to in order to understand whether or not profit is appropriate or not. So, who is the customer with regards to a prison? Well, you could argue that it's sort of not the prisoner because the prisoner is not usually voluntarily turning themselves in and trying to go to jail. Um, the th the thought would be that if someone's interested in committing a crime, they're probably not as interested in 
being punished or um, corrected in their actions, or they don't even see their actions as wrong. So it would probably be more intuitive to say that the customer in regards to prisons is the rest of society, the part of society that wants there to be law and order, that wants um, there to be security and safety, and um, they want you know levels of violence to be as low as possible. So in a free society, let's just kind of hype uh, hypothesize for a little while here and just sort of think about how could a prison be funded in a truly market-based scenario where, where it's not tax dollars that are going to pay for a private prison. So essentially the way it works now is the government either decides to take the tax dollars and use all government contracts and do it within the government to build a government prison, whether it's state-based or federal-based or whatever, which is a good percentage of prisons and then the other opportunity is to hire one of these companies which you can find in the link below to the Twitter's moment uh, moments feed I don't have them uh, top of mind here it's not too relevant as to what the name of the companies are but to actually hire these private prison companies that basically it's not as if you or I or Walmart or anyone else is, any other entities are um, paying for the construction of prisons in hiring these companies. These companies are dealing only in state contracts. So the customer is essentially the state. Now a statist or someone who advocates for, for bigger government might say, well look, you know, we need the government and the government's actually representing our best interest. They're using our tax dollars to fund um, prisons and they want the prisons to be effective. They want them to be secure. They want them to be somewhat um, considerate to the, to the needs of the actual prisoners. We want them to, to be effective in, in all the ways that a prison should be effective. Well, okay, you could take that at face value and go, and go so far with that. When you talk about um, you know, rehabilitation and you talk about what's really best for the will of society, but you take, you take the actual end user of a product out of the loop, so, you know, let's say someone robs me and then they go to court, they get sentenced and they go to jail. Well, in today's system, I'm not part of that discussion. The judge decides what happens to that prisoner and then, you know, they're, they're paying their debt to society when really I was the one that was harmed. So you could say in a free society, maybe I would have a say in that. Well, I would say, look, you know, I don't care how long this person goes to jail as long as they pay for the thing they stole or pay for the thing they stole plus um, some extra amount for my for my hassle of having to you know chase them down and the maybe the anguish or trauma or whatever it may have caused me in some way shape or form so you could argue that in a free society there'd be a little bit more incentive to not only rehabilitate prisoners but to keep the amount of people going to jail at a minimum and I gave this a good amount of thought when I was preparing to, to do this recording because on the one hand you'd say okay well is it really the case that in a free society that, that prisons would try to keep their, their level of prisoners low? Wouldn't they try to get in cahoots with the courts or kind of drum up crime or something so that they'd have you know more customers, more tenants in their jail? Well, not really because you, you're, the product you're delivering to society is security and safety. So if you're growing more and more prisons, you could say, well, okay, well, that makes society safer because you're taking more and more criminals off the streets. Well, yes and no. You're breaking up families and you're, you're sort of showing with, with the fact that there's so many prisons and so many jail cells and so many prisoners that, well, wow, society must have not been very safe and there must be a problem with people. Um, and also, the more prisons that would be created in this scenario, the harder it would be to scale back down and have less prisons. You know, you're a company, let's say a hotel company, and you build 10 hotels in a city, and then all of a sudden no one travels to that city. There's no one using hotels, or the you know, same could be said with any other business, apartment store, you know, apartment buildings, convenience stores, laundromats. You want the capacity to meet the demand. The supply and the demand have to meet in a way that the market can sustain the supplier and not outpace demand. You don't want there to be 
10 wash machines and 100 people lined up trying to wash their clothes at a laundromat. The, la the laundromat would say, wow, this isn't just a spike. We could be making more money. There's a lot more people using our services than, than we're prepared for. So they would go ahead and extend their capacity. So you can extend capacity or you could reduce supply and that would sort of create a check. Now, I knew it would take a while to kind of explore these ideas, but I really think it's valuable. And that's kind of what Road to Liberty has always been about, is about we can talk all we want to blue in the face about the, the current events, the trends that are happening, the rioting, the Black Lives Matter, the, the political candidates and all that. Truthfully, I, I, I question whether that's really going to get us to a free society. One of the biggest problems we have with kind of getting state power out of our lives and, and focusing more on individual freedoms and liberties is the fear and the lack of understanding around what's possible. Um, Murray Rothbard, Stefan Molyneux, there's other libertarian thinkers um, who have done work in the area of trying to envision a free society and how certain functions of society could work outside of taxation and state control. So that's sort of what I'm trying to do here, and I, and I appreciate those who bear with me in this conversation and who can contribute some thoughts, um, productive ideas and thoughts t to the topic and the discussion in the comments and um, in video responses and, and creating your own content. So just kind of trying to take the ball and run a little bit further with this question of how would a private prison even function or how would it look, let's talk about the sustainability of that business model. So I own a company that, that imprisons people in a free society. Well, how can we establish that a crime was committed? How can we establish that the prisoner belongs in jail? Well, ideally, you'd want them to have break, broken a contract. So maybe they, they took a job or moved into a community or signed a lease that said, I will expose myself to these punitive outcomes if I violate any of these agreements. So maybe in the agreement it says I will not rob, threaten, um, initiate violence, I will not um, rape, murder, um, assault, any of these things. And if I'm found beyond a shadow of a doubt to have done these things, I expose myself to the judgments of this private court. Um, look, we could break that little understanding or, or scenario down a million different ways, and I hope we do. I, I look forward to that type of um, debate and discussion. But just taking on face value that someone signed into an agreement and says, all right, I want to live in this community or I want to take this job. There's certain behavioral standards that go along with that. So I will expose myself to the judgment of this court, the state farm or the all state or the, well, they shouldn't have the word state in them, but you know, the ABC mutual court of wherever, whatever. Um, and obviously there'd be incentives for society to have accountability to courts, to jails, to security firms, and all that. Right now, we don't have that option. We can't hire a company to go in and audit a police department. They're internally audited. They're internally managed. The same thing for prisons. So going back to the topic of this video, and it's, it's a bit more in-depth and trickier than I think a lot of viewers are going to be willing to um, submit themselves to, and that's okay. Not all my videos are designed to get a ton of views or to be super popular and get shared all over the place. In fact, I could care less if any of them do. Um, that's actually not true. I want them to be less so for my own ego and more so for the fact that that would be a sign that I was providing value and helping move this discussion forward. But not everyone's ready for this discussion. Some people are just worried about whether they're going to vote for the left or the right candidate, uh, or the lesser of two evils. So back on topic here. We'd think that in a free society, it's not about filling up as many prisons as possible because you're going to be charging the rest of society for that. And they're going to start to raise an eyebrow and say, wait a second, are you taking advantage of us? Are you putting more of our people in prison than, than is necessary? Are these people all really a risk to society? Are you holding them longer than, than is really necessary? Why are we paying all this for these, these prisoners? You know, if I signed up for a mutual insurance company or whatever and part of my premium went towards prisons or went towards courts, I would have a vested interest in making sure that those courts and prisons and security firms and all that were not wasting my resources. So that means keeping their costs down. 
um, they can make a profit. I have no problem with the prison company or court company. In fact, that's what I want. Um, so in a sense, you know, this is where we get back to the, the main kind of core of the issue with liberals getting very excited about the Department of Justice choosing not to use private prisons. It's like, oh good, we don't want people to profit off of jails. Well, forget about profit for a second. Don't we want there to be a real market mechanism in place? Don't we want the supply of jails to match the demand for jails? Meaning, don't we want to make sure that we're not putting more people in jail than is desired? Just because the state's paying for the jail, they're still using our tax dollars. They're still creating debt or whatever to pay for prisons. So if they're making the, the choices there, and it's not profit per se, it's still an industry. They still hire jail wardens, they still have CEOs or directors, whatever, they don't call them CEOs, they have directors or they have program managers of private prisons and stuff and they're federal employees. So there's still a huge market, there's still people gaining from jails. And we wanna make sure that those individuals, those groups, those powers that be aren't getting undue influence or undue power or undue amounts of our resources, tax dollar wise or otherwise, to be incarcerating our fellow brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers and, and children. So the thing I would caution liberals in this regard, if, if there's liberals watching and you agree with this um, privatization of prisons, first of all, are you sure that that's going to be the most accountable way to have the right people behind bars and none of the wrong people behind bars? Also, when it comes to victimless crimes like um, you know the drug war, do we want the state having the only influence there or do we think that the market would be better? I personally think that there's more people in society that don't want to put um, drug users behind bars. Whereas I think there's a smaller percentage of individuals in the government apparatus that have the same um, wishes. You know, I think there's more government people that want to see victimless criminals, quote unquote, people who have been caught with drugs on their person or using drugs or selling drugs. I think there's more people in the government apparatus that want to spend your money and my money on putting these people behind bars, taking them away from their families. Yeah. Okay. Is there less drugs on the street? Not really because there's the next in command that's going to step up and, and take over where that other drug dealer um, came out of the system. Anyway, I'm not doing this video about drugs. Um, so one last thing I'll, uh, I'll address here is the military. Let's think about this, right? Do we really want private companies making money off of war? Well, that's what we have. So why isn't the government, why isn't the left saying we got to stop allowing companies like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and all these defense companies making money on bombs and Air Force, um, air, you know, air kit. Air for um, um, jets and bombs and drones. Well, why is that okay? Well, I'll tell you exactly why that's okay. The state is less effective at managing resources. So just like it would be more expensive for the state to produce a bomb, let's just say, or a missile, than it is for the free market, it would be and it will be more expensive for the state to manage 100 inmates than it would be for um, a profit-seeking company to manage 100 inmates. And you might say, well, how is that possible? The co company's making profit. The state's just trying to break even. Not so, because the state, in, in not having to make a profit, in not having to provide value to shareholders or to investors, they just have to kind of maintain accountability to taxpayers. They get a set budget, and as long as they stay within that, everything's okay. But it's a one-way decision, right? So it's not as if, let's say the budget for a prison is $10 million a year, and then all of a sudden, next year, the state can't do that, and they go over budget. Well, nothing happens. So they just get a bigger budget. They just spend more money on that prison. Now it's $12 million. Okay, look, you know, prices go up. They're not going to go and say, oh, this experiment failed, you know, just like welfare and Social Security there's no looking back on these programs and saying, well, they're not working. So the notion that this is going to somehow become more affordable or more accountable to 
the taxpayer, I think, is something we should give a little bit more consideration and, and um, critique to. I'm uh, going to wrap it up here. So taking the military analogy a little bit further, the state isn't going to try to privatize the military. Um, but in the same regard, it's still quasi-private, like like the prisons are. You know, you and me aren't buying F-16s from from whatever Lockheed Martin or whoever the heck makes them. Uh, I don't know. We're not buying jets and bombs and and uh, uh, you know military grade tanks and things like that. So, in a large sense, the the military is already sort of privatized in the sense that prisons were. But it'll never be to the point where people aren't profiting off of it, and that's um, it's a tricky thing. It really is because, in some sense, when the state takes something over, they do it less effectively, and therefore they can't grow it as well. So, in a sense, maybe we should be advocating for the state to take over all sorts of you know, bomb creation and tank creation and all that because they wouldn't be able to make as many. They wouldn't be able to be as effective. Granted, it would cost us more for the same level of military equipment and all that, but if, if you have the belief that there's too much military action and too much military force and too much um, military spending, well, it, it, might just, it might just be the case that the state taking it over would sort of be a, a healthy... Um, destructive force, sort of like um, a weed killer, that would kill the um, the unwanted um, resource allocation there. But there is no good answer other than a free society. I mean, in a free society, we would look at the actual threats facing our well-being, whether on a community level, on a local level, on a wider geographic area, and we have crowdfunding means of pooling our resources, and we'd have, um, you know, blockchain-based, probably digital voting infrastructure that could um, sort of help us mediate how to allocate these resources or we'd have private companies that we would you know have transparency we'd, we'd, we'd only fund them with a promise of transparency and we'd see what their choices are we'd have, be able to listen in on their earnings calls like we do with Intel and IBM and Google and we'd be able to decide whether or not to buy their products or buy a competitor's products with the state there's a lot of privatization and privatization means less competition. It means a monopoly. And it's not the healthy kind of monopoly like Amazon where everybody uses it so much and it's so helpful that none of the competitors can come close to taking it over and providing a better service. Um, it didn't get to be a monopoly by being effective. It got to be a monopoly by force, talking about the state. So are we going to see any kind of overnight crisis because the state took over um, federal prisoning duties? Only if you're a shareholder of private prison companies or if you're an owner or CEO or you work for a private prison company, um, you're probably going to have a rough time. But this is sort of a, you know, another, another stone on that side of the fulcrum that's sort of weighing down state power versus private power. And, you know, you look at countries that go socialist where they take over the means of production. They take over the steel mills. They take over the car companies, the housing complexes, they take over supermarkets, and before you know it, nothing's being run effectively anymore because profit actually helps allocate resources. It helps people make intelligent decisions about what to spend on, how much to spend on what, whereas the state just sort of throws darts. They don't know because they're not trying to maximize a return. They're just trying to do what seems right to them. And unfortunately, what seems right isn't always what the customer wants or what's always going to keep the entity, the business, or the supermarket, or the prison um, in, a, in a state where it's serving its customer best. So I know we started out talking about private versus public prisons, but as we go down that road, we find out that this sort of has a lot to do with anything that could be privatized and what the value is of the free market. So I hope this was a somewhat fruitful uh, thought experiment for those of you who watched. And as always, I encourage uh, discussion. And um, I'm doing this late in the video, but I would love if you're watching this, something like 90 to 95% of my viewers are non-subscribed. Um, I really believe in trying to create a free society and increasing the freedoms and liberties that we have as individuals while still 
looking out for the best possible um, condition of all of mankind, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors. So with your subscription, you're supporting me in continuing to do what I do. I'm not asking for any funds or any kind of contributions. Um, just subscribe so that I can help get this message out there and so that you can stay involved in this discussion. Thank you so much for your time, and I wish you the best. Peace and love.